everybody, it's Gary again. You know, it's gardening season right now, and I was uh, looking at my squash plants the other day, and it reminded me of a class that I used to teach in Extension a few years ago. And it was called Good Soils, Good Gardens. And as I was looking at my squash, they were growing quite well, but we have an area in our uh, yard where we had been trying to fill in for a number of years by just composting there and building up the organic matter. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have to bring in some soil to level it out. But um, then I took a look at some weed growth this year, and the weeds are huge. And there's one specific squash plant that's probably double the size of my regular squash plants. Now, take into consideration this. We did fertilize our garden according to recommendations. We also watered the garden on a regular basis because it's been kind of a dry year. But the plants that were in that area, both the weeds and the squash that were growing, were huge, and there was no extra water given to them and no fertilizer applied to them at all. So it kind of confirmed what I've been teaching many years ago. Uh, well, it wasn't really many years ago, but a few years ago, in that if you have good soils, you have good gardens. Now, what do we mean by good soils? Today I'm specifically talking about the organic matter level in the soils. And usually we tell people if you have three to five percent on the soil test, you're in pretty good shape. But organic matter doesn't stay constant in the garden over time. Uh, it does blow away, for instance, if you're on a very light soil, like a muck soil. And it does continue to break down until it gets a stabilized form called humus. And organic matter is interesting in that it acts like a sponge. In other words, it can hold water in the soil and it also helps to hold nutrients and we have something that we look at on the soil test called cation exchange capacity and cations are the positively charged ions for those of you who remember your chemistry and um, these are certain nutrients that plants need and the organic matter because it is, it is negatively charged is able to grab and hold onto those nutrients until the plants need them so when you have a higher cation exchange capacity that means you basically have a more fertile soil as opposed to like a real sandy soil which I have on the, the north part of my property and nutrients tend to leach down through that soil fairly quickly. So as we take a look at these weeds in the squash plant it's growing really well. Now this is many years of uh, materials from uh, too much grass like when it rained too much and we couldn't rake up the grass or I couldn't mow it in then uh, we would put it over there if we had the rake. Um, also, uh, other things like weeds coming out of the garden, and of course those weeds do get some of the fertilizer that's applied to those gardens. That's been piled there, leaves have been piled there, and it's been 10 years or more that we've been just adding organic matter to that soil, and now it's a really nice soil and great to grow things in. And uh, the compost is down near the bottom, but it's sufficient for the plants to just grow beautifully. Now I want to show you another example of how beneficial organic matter can be to the soil. But we have to go to the front of my property to take a look at a tree. It's a Fraser fir. Let's go. As I mentioned earlier, the tree behind me is a Fraser fir and I bought two of them a number of years ago. It's over 30 feet tall now and it's in a very sandy soil along the front of my uh, yard. And the interesting thing about this particular tree is that it's not the best looking tree because it's on a very sandy soil. It hasn't been fertilized. It's rarely been watered except in maybe drought conditions. And so you can get an idea what this tree looks like. But what I want to show you is a tree that was planted at the same time. They were about the same height and everything. And um, one was planted in the front. And the other one was also planted in a sandy soil on the north side of my property. The only difference was there was a compost pile there for about three to four years before it was planted. Let's go take a look at that tree. You can see the other tree over what would be my left shoulder. And you'll notice it's growing among weeds and among other trees. It's, uh, it's surrounded by white pines and a maple in the background. And yet, if you were to look at the top of that tree and measure it, it's over 40 feet tall, and it is a much fuller tree than the one in the front. And basically, that the difference is the soil, the organic matter content in the soil got that tree off to a good start. Now, one of the unfortunate things about this tree is that it did 
split off and develop two leaders and up at the top you can see those two leaders but hey there's nothing I could do about that that's just the way it grew and uh, if I wanted to do something about it, it would have had to been at the time that that first started so what is the lesson here well having a good organic matter level in your soil is going to make your plants grow much better and they're going to be fuller healthier they'll be able to withstand drought more easily and um, what I do on my particular property is I try not to waste anything. Kitchen waste, <clears throat> at least um, non-greasy waste, goes into either the compost pile or it goes into my worm bins. And um, whenever I can, I will mow the grass back into the lawn, but there are those occasional times when it rains for maybe a week and the grass gets too large or too tall. And what I have to do is um, mow it repeatedly and then when I can't throw it anymore, I'll pick that up and then put it in the compost pile. Uh, leaves, the same thing. I try to mow them back into the yard, and if I have too many of them, I will rake them up and take them to either the compost pile or I'll spread them on the garden. But uh, after seeing this year's plants over in that low area, I'm not going to add any more organic matter to that area. Everything is going to my garden now. So uh, we watch over the years how this will improve the garden. Now, what we have done when we processed apples, for instance, all the apple peels were buried in the garden in various places, and it really showed up in the plants the following year. But now we're going to put massive amounts there, and the garden should just flourish in the future. Well, thanks again for watching, and also I'll be able to cut down on application of fertilizers and watering, which can be expensive. So uh, this is the tip for the day, and I hope to... Well, I can't really see you because you guys can only see me. But I hope you keep watching, and uh, thanks again for tuning into this channel. This is Gary, over and out. Mm -hmm.